one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. As the Apollo 11 mission started on July 20th, 1969, an estimated 600 million people tuned in to see Neil Armstrong become the first man to walk on the moon. But few remember the final speech given only three and a half years later. If I asked you to name the last man to ever walk on the moon, would you be able to answer? Forgotten history, the last man on the moon. Let's rewind a bit. The year is 1960 and NASA has just started their third human spaceflight program called Project Apollo. At first, their goal was to create a spacecraft that could fit three people. But later on, President John F. Kennedy made it a national goal to take man to the moon and return them safely. Obviously, there were many more small intricacies, considering the early 1960s were the height of the Cold War and the space race. While the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis was taking its toll on the world, scientists at NASA were hard at work on the Apollo Command Service Module and the Saturn I launch vehicle. Part 1. The Technology The Apollo mission was years in the making, even before it was official. The work of Werner von Braun and his team made it possible to dream that we could travel to outer space. The Saturn series of launch vehicles were originally meant to launch heavy payloads to Earth orbit, like military satellites. Later on, they explored the possibility of using Saturn rockets for manned spaceflight launches. Von Braun was transferred from the Army to NASA, where he became director of the Marshall Space Flight Center. By the end of the Saturn program, three versions of the rocket were successful. The Saturn 1, Saturn 1B, and Saturn 5. In other news, 1960s computers were slowly integrating card RAM, virtual memory, and disk storage drives that could store up to one megabyte of information. And just as a small reference, this video is encoded at 14 megabytes a second. Even though this technology would be considered less powerful than a modern calculator, it made it possible for man to land on the moon. A special computer known as the Apollo Guidance Computer was instrumental in the Apollo program. It was first used in 1966, but its performance was comparable to early first-generation home computers from the 70s, like the Apple II. Part 2 First Tests and Flights Codenamed AS-201, the first test flight of the Apollo program took place on February 26, 1966, some six years after the start of the program. After 37 minutes, the module had successfully reached and returned from suborbiting the Earth. Another major milestone was the AS-204 test flight. It was the first unmanned flight of the Apollo lunar module, which was manufactured by the Grumman Aerospace Corporation. The first manned mission in the program, known as Apollo 1, consisted of command pilot Virgil Gus Grissom, senior pilot Ed White, and pilot Roger Caffey. With a planned launch on February 21, 1967, a rehearsal test on January 27th of that year killed all three crew members. It was a disaster for the people involved and the program as a whole. Manned Apollo flights were suspended for 20 months and both NASA and the US Congress formed committees to figure out exactly what caused the cabin fire, how it could have been prevented, and what could have been done to save the crew. On April 24, 1967, NASA officially retired the Apollo 1 name in commemoration of the crew. In October of 1968, Apollo 7, which consisted of the backup crew of Apollo 1, became the first human spaceflight of the Apollo program. The crew orbited Earth for 10 days, 20 hours, 9 minutes, and 3 seconds, completing 163 orbits. Apollo 7 was also the first live transmitted television broadcast of a manned American spacecraft. Two months later, Apollo 8 became the first manned spacecraft to see the dark side of the moon. It took 68 hours for the crew to reach the moon, which they orbited 10 times before heading back to Earth. The final test flight before the big mission was Apollo 10, which also reached the moon's orbit and got within 50,000 feet of the lunar surface. Part 3 First, Last 
Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twain. Tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Apollo 11, July 16th. 1969, 1.32 p.m., a Saturn V rocket launched an Apollo Command Service Module and an Apollo Lunar Module from the Kennedy Space Center. On July 20th, the Lunar Module landed on the Moon's surface. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins made history and forever changed our outlook on the final frontier. I can assure you that millions here in the United States and around the world were watching and uh, I uh, uh, am just tremendously proud, personally, and speaking also representing the American people of what you've done. Apollo 12 was the second successful moon landing. It was also the first mission to have the remote possibility of interplanetary contamination. Long story short, NASA sent over a surveyor module to extract lunar soil and take pictures two years before the Apollo 12 mission. The crew was tasked with bringing back the soil samples and camera from the moon. It is widely claimed that Streptococcus mitis bacteria accidentally contaminated the camera equipment of the surveyor before launch. When the Apollo 12 crew brought the camera back, the bacteria was discovered, still alive. As unbelievable as it sounds, this tiny little organism managed to survive the extremely harsh lunar environment for two and a half years. Oh, the crew also carried the first color TV camera to the moon, but accidentally destroyed it when it was pointed towards the sun. Okay, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. We've had a main beam bus on a bolt. Apart from being a dramatic story of extreme bravery, skill, and fortune, the Apollo 13 crew is also credited as the farthest humans have ever traveled from Earth, at an astounding 248,655 miles. Apollo 14, Apollo 15, Apollo 16 were all successful missions. Notably at the time, Apollo 15 was regarded as the most successful manned flight ever achieved. I was strolling on the moon one day in, in a merry, merry, merry month of December. Now, May. May. May tomorrow. May, that's right. <laughs> May is the year of the month. Yeah. 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 When then, much to my surprise, a pair of bunny eyes. Doop, 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 doop. And finally, we have arrived to a distinct moment in human history, the Apollo 17 mission. The crew, made up of Commander Eugene Cernan, Command Module Pilot Ronald Evans, and Lunar Module Pilot Harrison Schmidt, broke several records, including longest time in lunar orbit, longest moon landing, largest lunar sample, and longest total moonwalks. Prepared with a lunar roving vehicle, Cernan and Schmidt spent a little over three days on the moon's surface, while Evans patiently awaited in the command module orbiting the moon. Since it was considered as the last mission of the Apollo program, there was a lot of discussion on where exactly the lunar module should land, and what kind of information they should bring back. Considering the gravity of the situation, Apollo 17 was the first flight to have a geologist on it. The crew of three were not the only living organisms in that module. Apollo 17 also performed a biological cosmic ray experiment, which employed five highly educated and specifically trained mice. Nicknamed by the crew as Fee Fi Fo Fum and Fui, four of the five mice made it safely back to Earth, with no signs of lasting cosmic ray radiation. The crew was also responsible for one of the most famous pictures known as the Blue Marble Photo, taken from 18,000 miles away as they were headed to the moon. During the three-day lunar landing, Cernan and Schmidt managed to set a few more records. They covered more than 22 miles in one day, they collected 75 pounds of samples, and Cernan set the official lunar speed record, going at a maximum speed of 11.2 miles per hour in the lunar rover. At the end of the third spacewalk, it was time for Schmidt and Cernan to head back to the control module up above. Bob, this is Gene and I'm on the surface. And as I take me a little step from the surface, back home, 
for some time to come, but we believe not too long into the future. I'd like to just let what I believe history will record that America's challenge of today has forged man's destiny of tomorrow. And as we leave the moon and Taurus Littrell, we leave as we came, and God willing, as we shall return with peace and hope for all mankind. Godspeed to crew of Apollo 17. And with that statement, Eugene Cernan was the last man on the moon. Check out the featured comment below, subscribe for more World on Earth, and I'll see you in the next video.